Hi, this is Will Stewart from OnlineChessLessons.net, and today I'm going to be looking at a pretty interesting game from the 2011 Russian Team Championship between Evgeny Naher and Alexander Moisenko. So two heavyweight players, um, solid 2600s, I, I think approaching 2700s. And so Naher had a uh, you know, play, this is going into a Sicilian here with uh, c5 and knight c6, and bishop b5, I believe this was... This is called the Ros Rosalimo variation, and uh, bishop b5 is kind of an attempt to avoid the main lines in the Sicilian, normally. And um, it tends to lead maybe a slight plus for white, or a roughly equal position, so it's usually not trying to get too much out of the opening. And now with moving to knight g7, black doesn't want to get his pawns messed up if, if white does take c6, that's the idea. And so now d4, and I think typically you see here rook e1, a6, and then bishop coming back to f1. So so white doesn't have to give up the white square bishop. Or possibly c6, c3, and this being the idea to preserve the white square bishop if possible. And so now d4, and knight takes, and after knight takes, and now queen takes d4. And this is kind of a weird position because... White is kind of inviting black to harass his queen with knight c6 and, and develop, you know, gain tempos with a6 and whatnot. And I guess Nahir maybe had looked into some past Moisinko games and prepared this because it's kind of tough to imagine he did it. He came up with this over the board. And so now with queen c3, this is a strange variation. I can't remember ever seeing it. And the idea with queen c3 is simply to make it tough for black to develop that bishop on f8 by putting pressure on g7 and so it's this is a strange opening but i guess it makes sense just making it tough for for black to develop but it seems to me that black can just play b5 bishop b7 and maybe queen c7 and castle queenside so b5 and now bishop f4 and i'm assuming the plan is going to be rogue d1 and bishop d6 really clamping down on black's position and after bishop b7 now rook d1 and so this uh while it looks so strange the queen on c3 it is still maintaining that bishop on f8 and now rook c8 and so black is decided instead of castling queen side why not just try to kick that queen off by kind of tactical means and, and there's also the idea of b4 to do it as well and so now queen g3 so white is really setting up control of that d6 square controlling the dark squares in the center and also still maintaining control of g7 and you know maybe if black tries to snatch a pawn white's just going to give it to him and that that's not going to be good that's way too much uh, development for white for just a pawn so the variation seems very strange but it makes sense somewhat on, on a level it makes sense and so now a f bishop e7 and so if takes bishop f6 and black's going to pick up an exchange here if he wants or at least have compensation for the pawn so a4 trying to weaken up these these queenside pawns and b4 so now the c4 square is accessible to the white knight knight d2 and now e5 and now here this, uh, this, I don't know. I mean, this is why I thought it was compare, prepared with a computer because it's such a strange move. But maybe Nahir kind of looked at similar lines and sacks and just decided to go for it. And so a normal person would probably play bishop e3 and have control of the d5 square. Maybe a slight plus for white, I would say, because maybe the play is going to continue something like this. And, um,. Maybe maybe white can hop in d5. Just, you know, food for thought. But instead, now here plays knight c4. And it's like, wait a second, isn't, uh, he's just giving up a piece. Well, he's giving up a piece here, but he's going to get some good compensation for it. And it's not clear at all at first. And now with queen takes g7, so now bishop f6 doesn't work because of check. We need to mate. So that's going to force rook f8. And now e5 by Nahir, and his idea is slowly becoming clear. He's probably going to play something bishop g4 or bishop h5. 
and rook e1 and play knight d6 check opening up the e file towards the black king so that's that's going to be his idea essentially it's just the black king is very cramped there and doesn't have much space to get out so Moisinko just decides hey screw it sack a piece back because maybe he's going to play queen c7 and now bishop g4 is going to be very strong putting pressure on that d7 point not to mention white is threatening knight d6 so the sack was sound and he gets the piece back now obviously he's not going to play knight takes and run into bishop f bishop f6 and just drop a piece there and so <coughs> after queen takes e5 now he's just threatening mate with knight d6 essentially forcing d5 and now white is uh if you count the pawns up the pawns are e equal even though black has a doubled pawn here and white's got a pin on the queen and he's got a very very open position meanwhile the bishops black is just defending he can't even castle his king is stuck in the center so white is probably close to winning here so now queen takes f4 just playing on the pin there's no need to move the knight yet and now rook c6 and so that's definitely a good idea is to activate the rook to defend laterally along the sixth rank and now knight e3 and so bishop f3 doesn't quite work here because then just rook takes c4 and so knight knight e3 just win the d5 pawn or maybe transfer the knight to f5 and with rook g6 so black's only hope is going to be to create counterplay with the rooks on the g file and try to attack white's king Otherwise, he can just resign right now. His position is, is too bad. There's there's just too many. His pawns are too spread out. White's just going to pick them off. And there's no coordination in his position. Meanwhile, white, um, you know, black's king is stuck in the center. He's going to pick off this d5 pawn. And just, just easy, easy game for white now. And so bishop d6. And, yeah, I mean, like like I was saying, you know, the only, the only source of hope for black is to attack. And so now white is up two pawns, and he's still attacking black's king. And so rook g7, and rook d4, and white is just beautifully centralized. All of his pieces harmoniously working together, and um, meanwhile black is just trying to attack on the g-file, but it doesn't really have any good focal points. And so now rook h6, trying to coordinate his position into an attack but it's just not enough especially with white's uh, light square bishop just dominating the diagonal it's not going to work and so g3 just calmly and here's the idea bishop d7 so black's idea here is to sack every piece that he can to try to open up white's king starting with rook takes h2 and if moisinko had been a little bit or, or not here had been a little careless King takes h2 and now queen h4 and he's he's at least got some good counterplay. It doesn't seem like it's quite enough to mate as um, similar to the game continuation. This doesn't quite work. But anyway, I mean, that's the idea. So now here just starts collecting pieces. Now he wins. Um, that's a bishop. Now queen h4 taking advantage of the pin. And um, rook takes d7. And um, in this position, Moisinko just resigned. He got hit with a pretty impressive move in the opening. Knight c4. Um, that was that was definitely something else. So that's uh, that was a good game. And and Nahir is definitely a very strong player, doing well in the 2011 Russian Team Championship. So this is Will Stewart from OnlineChessLessons.net, and thanks for listening.